Good morning, and it's good to be with you this morning doing the service for Wednesday, the 28th of June. Um, I'm here on Barnell Ridge Farm recording for the service for Trinity. And uh, yeah, I hope you're enjoying the summer. It's been a bit overcast and rainy of late, and, uh, but promising of sunshine soon. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is our refuge and our strength. O come, let us worship. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 145, reading from verse 8 to 13. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and your faithful people shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power, to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from 1 John, chapter 2, verse 18 to 25. And John writes, Children, it is the last hour. As you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. From this we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But by going out, they made it plain that none of them belongs to us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and all of you have knowledge. I write to you not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and you have known that no lie comes from the truth. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father, and everyone who confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you had heard from the beginning abide in, abides in you, then you abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is what he has promised us, eternal life. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading for this morning is taken from Luke chapter 11, verse 33 to 36. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it in a cellar or under a bushel basket. Rather, one puts it on a lampstand, so that those who enter may see the light. Our eye is the light of our body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But if it is unhealthy, your body is full of darkness. Therefore consider whether the light in you is not darkness. But if your whole body is full of light, with no part of it in darkness, it will be as full of light as when the light gives you light, lamp gives you light with its rays. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you. Lord Jesus Christ. This morning I want to explore some key ideas in Psalm 145. Central to Hebrew theology is the idea that God is a universal God who is Lord, Yahweh in the text, of all of the created order. This theological view of the universality so stood in contrast to the religious views of the other people that suggested that very particular gods associated with particular people or particular objects. Thus, while Yahweh had chosen a particular people to achieve the mission of God of reconciliation and restoration of all things, this universal God's intention was not for a particular people or thing or location. Psalm 145 is introduced as a song of, a, a song of praise 
uh, Techalil of David and was elevated to a special level in the Talmud. Everyone who repeats the Techalel of David thrice a day may be sure that he is a child of the world to come. The psalm is set out as an acrostic poem with, in a Hebrew text, set out in 21 lines for each letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Included within it is verse 1 and 21 are the lines, Bless your, or his name, forever and ever, to indicate the intention of the psalm. Ultimately, it's a summation of the nature of this universal God, an acknowledgement of who God is that is meant to bring us to a state of worship. The comprehensiveness of this universal God is to be seen in the fact that the words every, all, or lakol in Hebrew is used 13 times in the psalm. The, set, the psalm is set out in four panels, verses 1 and 2 plus 3. Verse 4 and 7, plus 8 and 9. Verse 10 to 13, A, plus 13, B. Verses 14 to 20, plus 21. Our reading for today uses the second half of that second panel from verse 8 and enters the whole of the entire third panel. Our reading starts with verse 8. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. It's what the reformer John Calvin referred to as a clear and satisfactory description of the nature of God as we can ever be found. Theologically, we are always to start our conversation on the nature of God with that premise, Yahweh, or God, is gracious, Hanan in Hebrew, and compassionate or merciful, Warahum, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, mercy, or chassid. Those characteristics define the nature of God. Those characteristics are foundational to who God is. However you cut or dice it, God is foundationally gracious, compassionate, and steadfast in love. In our text, it even qualifies that steadfast love with the word abounding. In Hebrew, it's the word great, achadal, that speaks of the very generous nature of God. In verse 9, the psalmist shifts from the subject, the giver of the grace, compassion, and steadfast love, to the objects or recipients of that grace, compassion, and steadfast love. All or all that God has made are the recipients of that. There is nothing, no one, or anybody who is excluded from grace, compassion, or steadfast love. There is nothing, no one, or anybody who is not included in the embrace of grace, compassion, and steadfast love. So often, that's not our image of God. So often, we are told that God is exclusive, particular, and limiting. So often, the reverse image of God is com communicated to us, and we are told to live our Christian love, lives patterned on that understanding of exclusion, particularity, and limitation. So often, our life of ministry is self-defined, but those who belong versus those who do not belong. Those who believe as we do and those who do not believe as we do. Those deserving of God's love and those not deserving of God's love. If we honestly took the Bible seriously, we would live very different lives. Lives that are inclusive, affirming and valuing of all. Lives that are gracious, compassionate and marked by an incredible commitment and generosity to others that only steadfast love can achieve. The constant dilemma in the Psalms is how can God be like this when some or many of the recipients of this grace, compassion and steadfast love are so undeserving of it. That's the whole point. Rather the Psalmist argues surely God would rather reward those of us who faithfully follow and punish those who do not. But over and over again the voice of God in Scripture reminds us that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. That we are not the arbitrators of God's mercy and compassion. That God will be merciful to who God will be merciful to. And that suffering is no indication that God does not love us. Pray God that we may know that gracious, compassionate and steadfast love of God in all its abundance and generosity. And that we might recognize it in others. 
pray, God, that we, in all our complexity, embody that same exclusive and universally applicable grace, compassion, and steadfast love to all things that God has created. Amen. We affirm our faith together in the Hero Israel. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. I invite you to join me for our intercessions with the refrain, In your mercy, hear me. Lord of creation, in your mercy, hear me. You have created the universe by your eternal word and have blessed humankind in making us stewards of the earth. I pray for your world, that I may share and conserve its resources and live in reverence for the creation and in harmony with all. Lord of creation, in your mercy, hear me. You have given the human race a rich land, a land of streams and springs, wheat and barley, vines and oil and honey. By sin we have made it a world of suffering and sorrow. I pray for those who bear the weight of affliction, that they may come to share the life of wholeness and plenty. Lord of creation, in your mercy, hear me. In Christ you call us to a new life, way of life, loving our neighbours before ourselves. Help me treat with care and respect the world as it is that I live in, in hope and anticipation of a world as it will be when your kingdom comes and your will is done. Thank you for those living and departed who have shown a true respect for your creation. Help us to follow in their footsteps until with them we see you face to face. We all are made new in Christ. In your mercy, hear me. Amen. We pray the colleagues, O God, our defenders, storms rage about us and cause us to be afraid. Rescue your people from despair. Deliver your sons and daughters from fear and preserve us from all unbelief. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Two key announcements. Just a reminder that on July the 17th, um, we are hosting a concert for the Christ College Choir from Cambridge. And tickets are $25 and are available from the parish office, either to be picked up on, a, on Tuesday between 9 and 1, or Friday between 9 and 1. Or you can pre-order them and pay uh, by e-transfer and pick them up at church on a Sunday. If you can help with billeting um, the 20 odd choir members that are coming, that would be so helpful. And we're still looking for places for them to stay for the Monday night, the 17th, um, and then to have breakfast, and then to be dropped off at Trinity. And secondly, we have a men's breakfast. Our regional men's breakfast will be on Wednesday, July the 5th at 8.30 a.m. at the Breakfast House on Bayfield. And all men are more than welcome to attend. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.